Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. Today we have a, um, a question from Catherine Lond. Hola, Hola Catherine. Catherine. Catherine is asking about the de in Spanish and about the system that might be attached to the use of de or not. Okay. Entonces, vamos a hablar de eso en la segunda parte. De eso. <laughs> So this is early intermediate, so we're going to do this in, in English. Obviously, we're going to give examples in Spanish. So Catherine is saying, um, I would like an explanation on how to use the word de. Okay? She did this in Spanish and wrote it beautifully, by the way. Yeah. Um, Muy bien. Uh, there are many examples, and it seems as though there's not a, a concrete rule that I can use. Very, very perspicacious of you. Okay? Tremendous perspicacity. Muy bien. Perspicaz. Uh, same word. Perspicaz. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Okay, so she says, for example, we've got estar de. Estar de. Okay. No, estar de. Estar de. <laughs> estar de. Estar de. Uh -huh. Estar de. So we've got examples like estar de vacaciones. Mm -hmm. Estar de acuerdo. Estar de acuerdo. Estar de luto. Estar de, for example, when you take on a, a job that is not your job. Estoy de un camionero estos días. Mm -hmm. Estoy de, estar de... Estoy de, um, de tour. Estoy, estoy, de, estoy de fiesta. De, de fiesta. <laughs> eh, en México estoy de pachanga. Estoy de pachanga. Ok, we use pachanga as well. Pachanga. Ah, pach well, we don't use it regularly, but we know what pachanga is. In English, that estar de... Very often we'll say, I'm on. I'm on a tour. Yeah. yeah? Um, but not always. I'm on holiday. Yeah. I'm on a course. Estoy de curso. Yeah. So it's, I'm on. But sometimes, estoy de fiesta. We don't say, I'm on, I'm on a party. No? No. That sounds good. I'm on a party. I'm partying. Yeah. I'm on I'm a party. I'm sounds really party. good. You should take that on. I'm, I'm on a party. I'm on, I'm on a, a party. party. I'm on a party. I'm on a party. Um... <laughs> party plan and, yeah. and what about um, when you do a job like I'm doing this temporarily for example or this is like a, a side we, job we would have a, to say something I'm temping as I'm temping as something I'm doing right. yeah. or like I'm working as this now but it's temporary we'd have to kind of explain it we okay. don't have a way of showing it so that's it that's a very and, and it's always about something that's why we use a star yeah uh, it's something that's just happening for the moment it's a temporary thing you know when yeah. you're on tour when you're on you're, you're, you're partying you're, you're on holiday you're going to go back to normality so it's something outside of your normal yeah so when we use a star there what a shame eh? that partying uh, it's not uh, you normality see, if you were partying all the time and I know this if you party for 10 years like what I did, yeah. then it's the party stops and that's a normality. <laughs> and actually coming out of partying and, and being normal is actually like having a holiday. But then it would move from estoy de fiesta a soy un fiestero. Soy un fiestero. Soy un fiestero o soy una fiestera. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Which is, um, what would you say? I'm a... I'm party a party person. animal. Party animal, party, party person. Animal. Okay. Yeah, party animal, yeah, we said. Party animal, yeah. Okay. If so you're then, English. Then next, exactly. <laughs> party animal uh, and then the next uh, thing examples that that Catherine gives us is de pequeño <clears throat> or de pequeña oh si sí, muy bien de pequeño de pequeña yeah. we did this in the book club now that in English that comes out as as a child as a well, child or when yeah. or when when, I was, when I was a child okay de pequeño de mayor de adolescente de adulto mm. yeah so that one o cuando era pequeño, cuando era mayor, cuando era adolescente, yeah. cuando fui adulto o adulta, yeah. o cuando era un bebé, de bebé. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. You can say de. De. As a. De, as a de joven. As, as a de, child, as an adult, yeah. as, or, or when it's, I was. It's much faster to just put the de on there to describe when I was. Yeah. But you've just got to know that. You, if you don't know it, you would never pull day out of a out of a hat if no, you didn't no, no. know that. It's something that you you learn and then you use. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yes, it's very common to say de pequeño or de pequeña, 
eh, ella era una chica muy inquieta. Uh -huh. Y luego de adulta, lo contrario, era una chica muy tranquila, por ejemplo. Yeah. And then she got de noche, de día. De noche, de día. Yeah, that again. The, these things you either know or don't know. You can't just say, oh, we use a de here. Because yeah. it's like in English. I, oh, I know when to use on all the time. And because yeah, um, de noche, de noche, we, we would have to say at night. Yes. Or de día, during because, the day. Well, English and Spanish can't be translated to one another. Not always, no. Literally. No. Okay, because it's a different language. Mm -hmm. And yours is a Saxon language and ours is Latin. Exactly. So, I mean, it's in many cases, it's the same. Like, the structure is kind of the same. I mean, how we do the verb sure, tenses. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There's a lot of similarities thank god for that it's mm -hmm. not it's not like it's chinese or something but sometimes it's but, like it's like a foreign bloody language it is <laughs> but it is another language so you can't translate literally from english to spanish or spanish to english because it's just gonna sound like a I don't know like it's not flowing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so exactly. you need to learn like at night de noche yeah de día During the day. During the day. During I mean, not, you, you don't even say at day in English. You have to say during and then at night. Naturally. I mean, it's just... What can I say? And why? Because it then, sounds right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And afternoon. During the afternoon, yeah. During the afternoon, yeah. So it's just night. Uh, at night. At night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... De noche, de día, de mañana, de tarde. In the evening. In the evening. Mm -hmm. In the evening. At night. For example, you can day. say, estoy de mañana. Estoy de mañana. O estoy de tarde. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know. I've never heard that. Like if you've got a job and you can work morning shifts, ah, okay. evening shifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can say, oh, this week, estoy de mañana. So I'm on morning shift this week. Yeah. Estoy de mañana. Or I'm on evening uh, shift. Estoy de tarde. Okay. Yeah? Okay. O estoy de noche. I'm on a night shift. Yeah? Uh -huh. So another estoy de. Okay. Um, that that reminds me of the way that in English we will say, because you really are saying I'm I'm morning, you know, and we're asking people for. for <laughs> I'm morning. I'm morning. Yeah. Uh, your afternoon. Yeah. Uh, we would ha we could say the same. I'm but we'd have to put an s on. I'm mornings and your afternoons. So if you said like this week, this week I'm mornings. This week I'm mornings. Okay, we would say estoy de mañana, uh -huh. estoy de tarde, estoy de noche. It just reminds me of when we're asking, when we're making drinks. And oh, we go, yeah. Are you, are you black? You're black. Are you sugar? <laughs> Who's white? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's quite funny. Okay. We don't do that in Spanish, by the way. That would be weird. No. ¿Quién es negro? <laughs> <laughs> that would sound so weird. Like, who's black? Yeah. Who's white? Exactly. So, Catherine then says, is it a case of just learning them um, one by one? Or is there a pattern... Or a rule. Oh, well, de definitely there's a pattern in Patterns some cases. Are, are yeah, like estoy de, for example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, de niño, de pequeño, de mayor, de... That's another pattern. Yeah. But in other ones, you use it because the verb requires de. Like some verbs require a preposition. And some require the preposition de. Depende de, for example. Exactly, Depende yeah. de. When you say it depends on, we would say it depends of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah. You know, so there's, that's another pattern. There's another thing, another pattern with de, which is very, very important, especially when you're learning Spanish at the beginning, which is de is um, a, a dividing line, D for dividing, that divides the sentence completely. So what, why that's important is that everything has to agree in a Spanish sentence. So you say, uh, un hombre eh, tranquilo y... Eh, another O word Tranquilo y eh, gordo. Relajado Relajado Mejor <laughs> no? So o Una mujer tranquila y relajada Okay uh -huh. So that So everything has to agree Yes Until we come across a de Which divides The sentence After the de It doesn't have to agree So that's why you can say um, So for example Un eh, un kilo eh, un kilo de manzanas, de manzanas rojas uh -huh. yeah so 
the kilo is there, but the day then takes it because you you would have to, if it was on on kilo. Oh, I know what you mean, Bob. Because also after day you have another name, you have yes. another noun, which is manzanas, yeah. and they carry the weight manzanas. Yeah. So then the rest, the adjectives like manzanas rojas, rojas is an adjective uh, that would adapt to the noun. Sure. Yeah. But so even if you, you have another noun, sometimes you can have two halves. You can say un hombre tranquilo de eh, un país lejano. Again, yeah? the un país, so país would be the noun, so then lejano would have to match país, not, not person. Yeah? Absolutely. It's got nothing to do with un hombre tranquilo, because <clears throat> exactly. you can say una mujer tranquila de yeah. un país lejano. Yeah, because far away is yeah. going with país, país. And not going with person. So the day splits the sentence. So you, whatever's yeah. on this, this side of the day, has to agree and whatever's on that side of the day has to agree but they don't yeah. have to agree with one another it's another important thing about day well you would have to know where the where the adjectives go with what noun yeah. yeah also another day that we have that you don't and we use it uh, all the time as sometimes you don't use you use it that way is the genitive yeah you've got the saxon genitive uh, which is for oh, yeah. example Peter's car. Yeah. Yeah, and you put apostrophe S. Um, obviously, we don't have apostrofo, so we have to say the car of Peter, el coche de Pedro. Yeah, so that's the one day that we have. Um, sometimes you put the apostrophe S and then you don't say anything else. It's Peter's. Like, it's Peter's. <clears throat> It's Peter's, okay? So we would say, es de Pedro. Or sometimes either apostrophe S or just apostrophe because it's in plur the word is in plural. Like, I'm going to my parents. Yeah. We wouldn't have to say, in that case, we would have to say house. A la casa de... Voy a la casa de mis padres, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't use the apostrophe S or apostrophe, but it is a, a, a genitive. For example... Sometimes you don't put apostrophe and it's like something, something. Or, and sometimes you even do, like the house of horrors. Oh, yeah. Instead if, of horrors house. If we do it that way, it makes it very impactful. Right, but sometimes, I can't think of an example now, but sometimes you've got uh, children hospital. You don't say children's hospital. Yeah. Or some, okay, yeah. well, not yeah. that example then. But sometimes yeah. you, you've got something, something. Yeah. But still a genitive, okay? And he's saying that. Like, you don't, but you do, trust me, because I've, I've had this before. Yeah, um, no, no, I'm sure, no, I'm, I'm just trying to think of the, the examples. I remember you talking about this before, mm -hmm. that, that we, some, but typically, typically, we'll do a women's clinic. Women's clinic. Women's no. clinic, okay. typically, yeah. Well, sometimes you I can't think yeah. of anything now, but for sure you have, sometimes you don't have the apostrophe, but we do have to say the de, yeah? Okay. Clinica de mujeres, so. Sorry, can you remember, um, it was just something like Bob White's eggs. Oh, yes. That we oh, saw. Bro. It was really weird. Sign. Los huevos. Los huevos blancos de Bob. Was it, was was it so Bob's funny. white eggs or Bob <laughs> Bob White's eggs? That was a sign. Was it going to... Uh, it was going, going down, down south. Going down south, down south, yeah. Yeah. Was it in Stevenage or something like that? I like, don't know. It was just a little village like that a, we passed like through. Like a village and there was like a sign and it said Bob's... Bob Bob <laughs> White's eggs, <laughs> rather than I always say, is that are they, those eggs are white or other other? He's called Bob White. So oh, that's funny. That's there for you. Now there isn't any. There, there are lots of patterns that you have got to watch out for, but there isn't really any system that you can use except for listening, reading books. The more books you read, the dog more, food, eh? Dog food. Dog food. Dog food. Yeah. Instead of dogs' food. For yeah, example, so exactly. we would say comida de perros uh -huh. or para perros for dogs. Yeah, in, that, in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our children, because they're, they're bilingual, they're having they have problems with the the, the apostrophe. So, for example, um, Sebastian, not so long ago, was still saying eh, vamos a la a los yayos casa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's because true. that's exactly how we would say it in English. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the yayos house. <laughs> so, and that's what I say to them. We're going to the Jajo's house, and so I obviously talk, cause total confusion in there. <laughs> okay, Jajo mm -hmm. is our word for Nana and Granddad. Granddad, yeah. Jajo. Uh 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. Or oh, abuelos. We could say abuelos, but uh, kids tend so to say... So, yayo and yaya. Yayo, yaya. So, both together would be yayos. Los yayos. Los yayos. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there you are. Thank you very much, <laughs> Catherine, for, for that suggestion. That was great. And I'm sorry that we're not able to offer you any any um, uh, system. However, we Hopefully. have got something to be able to offer you in yeah. a moment. But first... And now, a word from our sponsors. Muchas gracias, Robin. <laughs> Robin es del noreste de Inglaterra. Robin, you were from the northeast of England. I don't know where, but that's a beautiful accent that I <laughs> I resonate with completely. Yeah. Um, now. I'm non-biased. No. Non-biased. No. <laughs> no, but when I hear an accent from the north, I just want to embrace people. Uh... Okay. Okay. So, um, what we what we promoting this week is, oh, the, is be, this. Be, good 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 reframing better to say promoting than pushing pushing and or what was the other thing you said to say no no, no plugging <laughs> promoting is a really good word we are promoting Thank this you, book <laughs> why are we promoting this book well this we'll book work really hard we, i know i know we to yeah. produce the books and yeah. you just say what are we pushing yeah but i always find it a little bit you know when when somebody says and this this has a paid promotion in this video and you think when is it going to come <laughs> when is it coming and then they suddenly they'll go and so we're talking about day now day sounds like dates and we're <laughs> going to show you these dates these dates are succulent dates I've had them. I've been using Many them for a week. Many of you have asked me. Exactly. Yeah. I've been <laughs> Where using do I get my dates. Date? <laughs> exactly. I've been using them for a week now, and I've noticed that I've lost weight already. Uh, you're gonna go, what? No, unfortunately, you're not going to lose weight without a book. No. What however, exercise holding. However, is. if you just studied and didn't eat, you would lose weight. Hey, eh? eh? That's true. So this book is called, called the Prepositions, perfecting the prepositions. In here is a lot about day. Why? Because day is everywhere. Just as is ah, and all of the you know. So and por para por para the whole shebang. Okay, so what we've done with this book because we can't give you systems, but we can give you repetition that you can just do and do, and then you start learning which verbs go with which prepositions, etc. Exactly. Et yeah, which is very important. Absolutely, and we've also with this book uh, we we give you access to like flashcards that we've created which are all the information in the book, just through repetition, you can start to learn them. So that's the idea. So, it, you know, if there's no system, just keep doing it over and over again until you learn it. That's it. Fake it until you make it, no? Fake it until you make just it, just yeah. Just keep on doing it until it's true. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And if you're not sure, just stick stick any old preposition in. Yeah, exactly. They'll just look at you in a funny way. <laughs> <laughs> they go, what? Okay, yeah. Well, worst case scenario, you can go to Telegram, you know, join Lightspeed Spanish chat and yeah. you can ask Dave, you've got a question, for example. Sure, sure, absolutely. And, you know, if in doubt, just leave the bugger out. Yeah, that's what no, I no, do. Yeah. No, no. yeah, that's not a system, okay, by the way. Okay. That's a bad system. Entonces, <laughs> chicos, eso es todo. Muchas gracias, uh, Catherine. Y gracias, luego, Catherine. nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego. Adiós. Adiós. <laughs>